Let's make a 3D printer smart and print from your computer. For this tutorial you'll need a 3D printer with a USB port. This can be any type of USB port. You'll also need a Raspberry Pi with an Ethernet port. I'll be using the Model 3B in a case, but a Model 4 or 5 will also work. An SD card with an adapter to plug into your computer. A power adapter for the Raspberry Pi. An active Ethernet connection and cable. And a USB cable for connecting the Pi to the 3D printer. I'll need an USB Type-C cable. First of all, go to your computer and download the Raspberry Pi imaging software from raspberrypi.com slash software and click the blue download button. Open the file and click install. Click finish to open the software. Now plug in the SD card with the preferred adapter into your computer. Click on choose storage and select the drive you've just plugged in. Then choose the Raspberry Pi model you will be using. And click on choose OS. Other specific purpose OS. 3D printing and select Octopi. Click on Next to start the burning Octopi to the SD card. I'll skip the waiting part, it will also verify the installation. When you see a pop-up, it means that the burning process has finished. You can now unplug the SD card. Now, make sure the 3D printer is off and remove the SD card or USB stick from the printer if it has any. Plug the SD card with Octopi on it into the Raspberry Pi. Then plug the Ethernet cable into the Pi. Make sure the connector is all the way in it. Next up, connect the USB cable to the Pi and with the other end to the 3D printer. You can choose any USB port on the Pi. Now it's time to add power to the Pi. Plug the power adapter into the Pi and into your power outlet. As you can see, I haven't turned on the power yet. I'll do this now. I 
After waiting for a few minutes, go back to your computer, open the web browser and type in the internal IP address of the Raspberry Pi. If you don't know what that is, you can scan your network with an app like Thing. I'll link it in the description below. You should now see the Octoprint setup page. Click on Next. Here you have to create a local account to log in to Octoprint. Make sure to remember the info. When the login is successful, click on Next. In the connectivity page, you can keep everything default in this case. I'll enable the connectivity check. In the tracking page, you can choose to enable or disable this. I'll disable it for now. If you want to install plugins that are on a blacklist, you can disable this, otherwise you should enable it for security. There is no webcam present in my setup, so I'm going to skip this page. Now you have to set up your printer profile by giving your 3D printer a name and typing the model you have. After that, go to the print pad and volume tab to set the print dimensions of your 3D printer. If you don't know them, you can search your model online to find out. Also, if you have multiple extruders, you can set this up here, but I only have one, so I'll leave it as default. The last step in the Octoprint setup is to read this. It is advised to never leave your 3D printer unattended and not make this instance available to the public internet without knowing what you're doing. Click finish to end the setup. Reload the page to access it. The connection has not been set yet. You can do this by checking the two checkboxes and clicking on connect. If it is successful, you'll see the temperature graph of the bed and the extruder. To begin printing, you'll need a 3D model that is sliced. I downloaded a calibration cube and sliced it with Orca Slicer. This made a .gcode file which I will upload to Octoprint. Click the last button by your file to start printing. The 3D printer has now started. It will heat up and start printing. Let's see how the calibration cube comes out. The cube has been printed. I'll take it off the bat to show you the details. This looks pretty good for a first print with the default settings. If you have any questions, feel free to drop a comment. Thank you for watching and see you later!